Do you know Floppy Bird said the beginning of a whole new genre of mobile gaming, the hyper casual games? The game itself generated $50,000 a day and the hyper casuals became a multi-billion dollar market in the following years. Hi, I'm Nikki, and in this demo we are about to create our own Floppy Bird game using Unity and C Sharp. Let's go! Ok, first of all, let's open Unity Hub. I'm going to use the latest table release, Unity 2020.3 LTS. I will select the 2D preset, set the project name to Flappy Bird, choose a location and we're ready to go. Let's order the Windows layout to be easier to work with. Now we can see both the scene and the game view. Also, we are going to build this demo for full HD portrait resolution. I will create a sprites folder and import all the needed images for the game. Now we can use our sprites. I will drag the background to the scene, set the layer to minus 3 and the position to 0, 0. I will also add the ground and move it to the proper place. Set a higher layer and add a box collider to the components so we can detect the collision with the bird later. We have more than one bird in this sprite, so let's set it to multiple, apply the change and slice it. Dragging the slice sprite into the scene will automatically create animation and we just need to find a place to save it. I will create a folder animations and give it a name bird animation. I want to keep the project hierarchy nice and clean, so let's rename our bird and position it at minus 1 by x and 1 by y. I will add physics to the bird with the rich body 2D component and freeze the position by x and the rotation by z. Also, let's set a circle collider and make it a little bigger than the bird, for example 0.3, so we can frustrate the player, which is the whole idea of this particular game. Great! It's time to test if the bird falls and collides with the ground. Looks fine. Now let's make the bird fly. I'll create the folder scripts. Create the bird script, attach it to the bird and open it. We can delete the unnecessary code, add fields for the rigid body, the force value and the constraint. Also to expose them with the serialized field attribute. In the update method, which is called everyframe, we will check for left click mouse input and if we have such, the bird goes up. I'll just clear the previous velocity so we cannot add too much force to the flap. Also, I will add a boundary so the bird cannot fly too high. Back to Unity, in the inspector reference the rigid body, tweak the other field values and see what we have done. The bird can flap. It's time for the pair of pipe setup. I'm going to name it Pipegate. I will add the collider as a new component, duplicate the pipe with Ctrl D and invert the image. Also, we need to trigger a collider for the score detection we will implement later. Let's make it a prefab in a new folder and delete it from here. We can make the ground a prefab as well. In game development, Floppy Bird is defined as an infinite runner. There are already many third party flexible infinite runner solutions, but we are just gonna build a simple moving object and spawner scripts for the purpose of this demo. 
we will constantly move the position of the object to the left by some speed. And let me just multiply it by the elapsed time from the last frame, since we don't want the speed to be frame dependent. And let's add some bound, after which the game object will be destroyed. Exposing the fields. And now we want to attach the script to the pipe gate, set the values that will work for us, and also let's copy the component to the ground prefab. Let's check if our script works. Awesome! Now we can move to the spawner script I have mentioned earlier. We need a prefab to be spawned, a time interval, and a range by Y axis, which I will name YQAMP. Adding a private field elapsed time and increment it by the frame's delta time. If enough time is elapsed, the object will be spawned and the elapsed time will reset. I will get a random offset and apply to the position of the prefab to be spawned. Let's create an instance. This is our object spawner, but you also might check out the object pool design pattern. Let's put the spawner into action. I will create a spawner to spawn pipes every 2 seconds in some range by the Y axis. We can easily reuse its functionality for the ground as well. If we hit play, we can see the ground and the pipes spawning infinitely. The next step is to make the game end. Back to the bird script, we need to detect when the bird hits something. So I will add on that event and invoke it in on collision enter 2D. Also, let's freeze the time and return it to normal on game start. Now let's add a button so we can start over when the bird smashes. We can disable it from here and create a UI manager script to the canvas so we can add our play button related logic. The on game over method will show the button and it will be invoked when the bird dies. Let's make sure the method is unsubscribed from the event when the script is destroyed. The whole event implementation is known as the observer design pattern and it's commonly used in game development. We will also need a method to restart the game, which we can achieve through the scene manager. It's time to reference the play button and subscribe the restart game function to the onClick event. Let's test the whole thing. It just fine. The next step is the score. We are going to import the text mesh pro package for the score hut. Let's adjust the values. And done. Now I am back to the bird script and I will add another action event for the scoring. I will invoke it inside onTriggerEnter2D, which will be executed 
when the bird enters the trigger collider we added to the pipe gate earlier. Switch to the UI manager and handle a new listener. I'll just increment the current number of the score. And we should have a working score. Nice. What is a game without audio? The final step is to add some sound effects. Let's import them. Add a audio source component to the bird. And open the bird script. Here we need a reference to the audio source and all the sound effects we're gonna use. Play them here, here, and here. This demo only scratched the surface of what it's like to code games, but I hope it appeared interesting to you. Don't forget to check out our open lessons, blog and programming courses at SoftUni. They are highly practice oriented and many of our students already started successful careers as software developers. Goodbye from me and see you in the upcoming videos.